Hello everybody and welcome back. I thought I'd talk a little bit more about what I missed in the last video and uh, that was specifically how did Trevor Jacob get out of this area where he crashed his plane and landed his parachute. If you haven't seen my last video on how he crashed and where he crashed, please have a look at that. I identify the exact crash site. And uh, also, of course, take a look at his video and some of the other videos online. I'll put links to those videos in the description. So again, a regional overview, we're in California, uh, northwest of Santa Barbara, along the California coast. Um, the area specifically we're looking at is within the Los Padres National Forest and then the San Rafael Wilderness Area. So if we look at the Forest Service map, this big green area is Los Padres National Forest. The plane crash happened right here around Bald Mountain and that's within this wilderness boundary which uh, there is a four-wheel drive road that goes to the edge of it. Just to the west, that road exits and goes onto private land. Uh, and there are some ranches in that area. So if we go a little bit closer to the crash site, you can remember from the last video, the plane came in here up this valley near Bald Mountain and it crashed uh, just in here. And then we saw him parachuting. So I'm going to just have a quick look. I think I've identified the landing site. Um, we can have a look together here. But when he jumps out of the plane, you can see that he's actually, you know, close to just above the riverbed. And he definitely guides himself and follows the plane in. And um, I put the parachute landing site here. Let's have a look at maybe the exact moment where he lands and see uh, how close I got there. It's my general guess. I actually think we'll be able to find the exact location. So in this shot, it's a sideways shot, but uh, you can see this clearing below him. And uh, looking here, I actually believe that um, that clearing is just in front of this pin. Um, you can see this tree here and then a clump of, of bushes and kind of a field. So it's actually two kind of bigger trees casting shadows. And here in the video, you see again, two trees, that clump of, of bushes clearing around it. Let me show you again, two trees, yeah. So, um, you know, his, his shot's kind of just showing the edge of that. So he was really trying to get to his plane. He, he landed in the closest clear area, or at least attempted to. I think when he actually comes in, he just overshoots that uh, clear area and hits some, some fairly thick bushes. So um, he, he's somewhere around there. He's probably like just off here. So one thing I wanted to point out to everybody is that the actual location of this would have been along this ridge. And you'll see when I look at the topo map, there's actually a trail along the top of the ridge called the Hurricane Deck Trail, uh, backcountry hiking trail. So if we look at Google Earth, um, that trail actually comes up this mountain and, and it goes along the ridge. I'm not sure if he would have been able to see the trail. I can see it here in Google Earth. You can see it, especially as I zoom in. There's definitely a trail cut along there. Uh, if he would have seen that trail, obviously he could have hiked up and down. Or if he, of course, we've established he obviously wanted to go to the crash site. Uh, likely to get the cameras, he says, to get water. Um, so he could have hiked that and then hiked back up and then followed that trail, which would have been obviously a lot easier to get, get out than the way he, he, he chooses. So again, we're talking about, um, he's somewhere around 2,600 feet above sea level. The valley bottom is around the 1,400 foot mark. Um, so let's 
1200 feet. Um, so what he ends up doing, and you can see from his videos, is he, he walks from the parachute site to the crash site. And I gave a rough estimation before of the distance, but I'm going to try to give you a better one here. Again, this is just my guess from his video. I, I'm not saying that this is for sure fact. But that looks like uh, 1,700, 1,800 feet uh, cross country. Even if you went up and took the trail and then went down, that you know that would be substantial, especially if you're walking through thick brush, which you can see here that there is some. So uh, he makes it down to the crash site. We'll just have a look here. Um, you know, he gets untangled from his parachute. It says he takes him. Well, tw 20 minutes later, he's still hiking. Um, there's a view of the valley, and, and I did confirm that that's about the location where he uh, would have landed with his parachute. So this is the view from the crash site. Uh, we can see these three kind of vertical ravines and then kind of a bigger ridge and a, a deeper ravine. So let me just show you what that looks like in Google Earth. It's pretty easy to, to um, kind of establish the exact same things. So we've got, again, three vertical ravines and a big ridge and a deeper ravine. Three vertical, big ridge, deeper ravine. So that's definitely the same uh, stuff that he's looking at there. So I, I did some more analysis and, and it's obvious that he goes downhill and he would have traveled down somehow. I'm not sure exactly how, but he gets to a place where he says there's a cliff. Um, and I'll show you where that was. So at the eight minute mark, he gets to a cliff and he kind of does a quick pan of it. It's hard to see, but you can you can see that there's like a big steep ravine and then there's some exposed outcrop right there, um, right to the side. And, and that's going to be, of course, looking towards the east. So it's pretty obvious um, that it's actually right here. If you get down on ground level, you will notice that it is steep. You can see that cut here. So you can see that's the ravine where he, uh, he got to and he talks about having to go around. He points the camera this way, which is to the east. So he says he's going to try to hike up this. You'll hear him talk at around the eight minute mark. He says he's going to try to hike up and get cell service. Speaking of cell service, I pulled the uh, T-Mobile coverage map. Again, I know this is not all providers, but you know, fairly established one. Um, and yes, there are big holes in that area. Um, so I, I would say it is likely he did not have service. It looks like maybe some of those little spots would be slopes with the right angle pointing towards the tower or the tops of peaks. Um, so he says he couldn't get cell phone service. He says he hiked up. I'm, I'm not actually sure if he hiked up this direction or this direction. Um, but then he says, you know, a few times he says an hour has gone by. Um, and he's trying to get down the ravine and then you see him kind of sliding down. So what I believe he did is, is went, um, down one of these two sides and then followed this ravine all the way out to the river valley. And let me just look from a, you know, a, a lower perspective. If you're actually in that valley, that is, that is steep country. This is obviously a pretty big ridge. So, um, I mean, to be honest, I think if it was me, I would have gone up this side and then over, maybe here to here, but uh, he might not have known that. He might have gone up and around. So he gets to the bottom of the valley, um, uh, and he does have one good shot uh, kind of showing this angle where he's in the riverbed. I've put a pin on the map just about here I believe that's where that was taken from. If you uh, if you look at the mountain he's looking at, um, I believe it's this one right here. Have a quick look at uh, how long it might have taken him to get down to the riverbed. Um, I'm going to assume that he actually goes on this side. So let's say if he went up and over and down and uh, followed this. 
and then he was down in the riverbed and uh, this is about where he started recording here he's got 6,800 feet so that's over a mile of rough terrain um, no path some steep slopes so I, I do believe that it would have taken him a while to get there and from where he says he's on the riverbed to the wilderness boundary, which would have been easier walking. Um, you've got about 4,800 feet, so a little under a mile. Um, so after that point, I mean, it's anyone's guess. You can't really tell from the footage where he gets picked up or where he goes or where he finds water. Um, there's a four wheel drive road that runs down this river valley and it's fairly long. And it goes in and out of the riverbed and it goes away until it actually gets to fields. Uh, it is likely that cattle ranchers would have had their cattle up here. So, um, you know, he could have encountered someone in here. He could have walked all the way out to the actual farmland. Um, just for context, again, we'll, we'll have an approximate look at how far that hike would have been all the way out. It would have been quite far. Would have been going in the dark for a long time. I doubt he actually made it all the way out to the uh, to the pasture lands. So that's twelve miles uh, all the way out uh, to kind of this this the head of that uh, valley that would have had flat fields and some more civilization. Of course, it was later in the day, so the shadows would have been something like that. So yes, that's definitely that mountain he's looking up at. Um, that mountain he's looking up there, he said the sun was about to go down. So after that, his shots, uh, unfortunately, they, you know, he's in the valley bottom. It's not as easy to tell exactly where he goes, but it, it's clear that he went west. And like I said before, there's a wilderness boundary and there's a road. So obviously people wouldn't be able to drive in past the wilderness boundary, which is right about where this Manzana schoolhouse camp is. So he found that four wheel drive road. I'm going to just give you um, an idea first for how long it might have taken him to get down to the riverbed from the ravine. Um, I'm going to assume that he actually goes on this side. So let's say if he went up and over and down and uh, followed this. And then he was down in the riverbed and uh, this is about where he started recording here. He's got 6,800 feet. So that's over a mile of rough terrain, um, no path, some steep slopes. So I, I do believe that it would have taken him a while to get there. And from where he says he's on the riverbed to the wilderness boundary, which would have been easier walking, um, you got about 4,800 feet, so a little under a mile. Um, so after that point, I mean, it's anyone's guess. You can't really tell from the footage where he gets picked up or where he goes or where he finds water. Um, there's a four wheel drive road that runs down this river valley and it's fairly long. And it goes in and out of the riverbed and it goes away until it actually gets to fields. Uh, it is likely that cattle ranchers would have had their cattle up here. So, um, you know, he could have encountered someone in here. He could have walked all the way out to the actual farmland. Um, just for context, again, we'll, we'll have an approximate look at how far that hike would have been all the way out. It would have been quite far. Would have been going in the dark for a long time. I doubt he actually made it all the way out to the uh, to the pasture lands. So that's twelve miles uh, all the way out uh, to kind of this this the head of that uh, valley that would have had flat fields and some more civilization. Thanks for watching that video. I know it's not really providing any new information. I just thought people might be interested in what his hike out might have looked like. I do think that the descent from the crash site uh, and the parachute landing site would have been fairly treacherous. It would have been hard. Uh, you know, that's really scrubby 
California Central Coast chaparral vegetation. Once he was at the riverbed, the hiking would have been easier. Um, obviously, lack of water would have been an issue. It depends on the time of year. This, this river could have had a lot of water. It might not have had much. Um, we don't know the date of the crash, so I can't really speculate on the conditions. And we also don't know exactly where he was picked up. So uh, he could have hiked a little bit. He could have hiked really far uh, before he saw somebody. Um, I do think that this is a remote area. I don't think he was faking that he had no cell phone service. Um, and I'll let you make your determinations about what actually happened in the plane crash. Many other people have already talked about this uh, and discussed it online. I just thought it would lend to the conversation and give some people a geographical context on where all this was. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, the tools I used for this, uh, first of all, Google Earth, um, 3D view. You have to make sure you have the terrain box checked. And then if you hold your scroll wheel on your mouse, you can uh, pan around and it will give you an elevation. Um, on that note, uh, I had a look and my best guess is that he jumped out at 10,000 feet just based on the viewpoint here. Um, so I've discussed that in the comments of some of the videos. The other tool that I use for this type of uh, analysis is called Gaia GPS. It is subscription based, but if you need really good maps, it's awesome. So I'm using the US Forest Service topographical map to look at this. Uh, there's also land ownership layers uh, and you know hundreds of other awesome base maps from current snow cover to uh, you know geological service other topo maps imagery and you can plan your own routes so uh, i would highly recommend that to anybody that's uh, into kind of trying to understand some uh, some geographical context around areas or or plan a trip into the back country and make sure you're doing it safely as well as um, you know being on lands that you're you're allowed to to be on so uh thanks for watching and uh we'll see you on the next one